everyone. Welcome to today's video. Um, I'm Jennifer from Gen W Arts and in today's video I am going to play around with these amazing pencils from Caran d'Ache, the Museum Aquarelle. Um, I've used them before and I've made a video of them before so if you want more information about them check my older video in the link in the description below this video. Um, but in that video I made a kind of small artwork with it on the wrong kind of paper. Um, so today I'm going to make a larger piece on true watercolor paper so you can truly see what these magnificent pencils can do. So I hope you enjoy and let's get on with it. Hello everyone! In today's video I'll be doing another fan art of the Final Fantasy series. The summon, which wasn't actually a summon in this game, Carbuncle from Final Fantasy XIII. I really love this summon because it's so darn cute. I went with the Final Fantasy XIII version because it had a very detailed and intricate design. And wings! <laughs> I was at first going to draw the version from XV, but it did not quite fit the idea I had for the overall composition and color theme. Since since these pencils are like fireworks once you wet them, I wanted to draw something bright and colorful. If you're having trouble getting a nice composition for your piece, it might be handy to sketch out some ideas in small thumbnail sketches on a separate piece of paper or a sketchbook. This will make, your, make it more easy to pick the best composition for the final end piece. The advantage of these thumbnail sketches is that you can make a lot of them in a short amount of time, since they are small and don't need to be detailed at all. They are the perfect tool to quickly put your ideas to paper. When sketching the initial sketch, it's handy to sketch out the basic shapes first. Don't get into details yet, as those distract and can be added easily later when you're happy with the basic shape and placement on the paper. I started with the general shape of the body and right after started to sketch in the arms and legs and head. Before I add whatever is behind the body I put in some details such as the face, clothes and other ornaments. Then I draw in the wings which seem to be attached to its head. So cute! <laughs> um, and nope. These are not anatomical correct and they probably wouldn't function right in reality, but who cares? Because it is fantasy. <laughs> Sometimes it is perfectly okay to let go of realism and logic, especially in the fantasy genre. Here it's often more about the looks than about functionality. Then finally I draw in its long pretty tail to complete the composition and fill the empty void on the bottom of the paper. As you can see I chose to leave some of the wings cut off from the paper. This helps to put focus on the face and the body and at the same time it gives the character a sense of freedom. Sometimes it looks better to opt to cut parts off as it can be beneficial to the composition and it leaves something up to the imagination. Because it doesn't always look good to try and cram every bit into your paper, which can end up making your drawing less exciting. Before I start inking, I made sure I got all the details sketched in and because I want to add a lot of glowy bits, I sketched these in as well. So I don't accidentally ink over these. When you're planning to color your piece with watercolors or markers, it's a good idea to use a permanent waterproof, which are often marker proof as well, inking pen. If you're not sure if yours is waterproof, then test your pen on a scrap piece of paper with water or alcohol markers first. Some good waterproof marker proof pens that I use a lot are, for example, the Sakura Micron. Copic Multiliner, the Mangaka from Zik Kuretake, and the Bimoji from Kuretake. For this piece, I used the Rot Ring Fountain Pen, which uses a refillable pump system, which you have to buy separately though. 
Mm, so I filled the refill with brown Bombay ink from the Dr. PH Martin line, which are light fast and waterproof, and inked the entire piece with it. It's nice that you can ink with any color of ink with this pen, but working with it was kind of tedious as the flow wasn't that great from the pen to be honest. So I don't think I will grab this one the next time, but go back to my old trusty other pads. Anyway, it's time to break out these awesome sauce pencils. Before I start coloring, I am masking off the glow particles on the bottom section to make sure they stay white when I'm going to color. I use my trusty Mulatto masking fluid marker for this job as it is precise and less messy than normal masking fluid. When I start coloring with the Museum Aquarelle pencils, I am using very light pressure and gently put down and layer my colors. Even on a light pressure, the amount of pigment that is left behind on the paper is amazing. And if you're planning on wetting them, you will find out that a light layer truly is enough. Once you wet them, your mind will blow. Mine sure did when I did this piece. The colors seemed to explode into super vivid and vibrant colors, almost like fireworks. When I used them the first time, I used the pencils on the Stonehenge cotton, the ones that come in a pad. By the way, if you want to check out that video where I used them for the first time, check the video description below the video. You'll find the link there. Um, the results on that were okay, but not as amazing because the paper wasn't truly watercolor paper. But on Fabriano Artistical Cold Press, once wetted, the colors and flow were amazing. So while the first time I used them dry mostly, I really wanted to use them wet on this piece all the way. Because after I wetted them on this paper, I was mind blown. It was amazing. I got totally excited and wanted to do everything wet this way. Um, so yeah, it's truly awesome what a difference paper can make. So if you find your art supplies don't work so well, this is especially true with a lot of watercolor markers. Then try them on multiple types of paper. Some just work better than others. When one of your pencils or markers, watercolor markers, don't work properly, or it doesn't give you the desired results, it's not always to blame on a faulty marker or pencil. It could very well be your paper. So for the background, I chose colors that would go well with the teal color of the character and at the same time would make the character pop out. I used blues, purples, magentas and yellow colors. When I got the color on paper and decided to wet it, I start with the lightest color, in this case the yellow, then slowly move on to the next color, often washing my brush clean to keep the colors vivid and clean. Especially with color combinations as yellow and purple, it's best to work in this fashion, as it is easy to create mud because they are complementary colors. Complementary colors cancel each other out when you mix them, hence the mud. So if you want to preserve your vibrancy when working with opposite colors, you want to be very careful not to accidentally mix them together on your paper or palette. While working on the background on this cold press paper with the Museum Aquarelle, I also noticed another awesome trait these pencils have, which I did not witness when I used them on the Stone Edge paper the first time I used them. And that is that some of the colors do this wondrous and amazing thing that some high grade artist quality watercolors do. They granulate. When I found that out, I loved these pencils even more than I already did. And along with the superb light fastness and super bright vivid colors, it proves what a quality product these pencils are. Not that I'd expect anything less from Karen Dash, of course. If you look just under the character's right feet, you can see some of the granulating effects in the bit of orange between the yellows. When I move on to the character, I again mask off all the glowy particles to keep them white. 
When I paint an area where the glowy bits are, I don't wait until the paper is dry but go straight away back in with a red gouache from the Winsor & Newton designer line. To get the paint to flow over the wet surface, I choose to do this with gouache because it is very opaque and it really adds to the glow effect of these ruby spar sparkles. These are, by the way, a reference to its original summon spell Ruby Light. But if you're a Final Fantasy nerd like me, you probably already suspected that. <laughs> When working the character, I start off by applying a warm yellow, which is the same yellow I used in the background, along most of the edges of the character's body, tail and wings, to serve as a reflective light from the bright yellows in the background. Then I lay down a layer of teal on most of the body, except on its clothes. The teal color in the museum line is amazing, by the way. <laughs> Um, after that, I layer some cool blue on top to add some shadows. Again, it is a blue I used in the background. Bringing back colors from the background into your main subject unites your subject with your background and makes it more harmonious and gives the viewer the impression the character truly belongs in the drawing. That is one of the reasons I love to start off with the background because it is so much easier to translate background colors into the character to make it fit when, than when working the other way around. And believe me, I know this because in the past I hated, no, I dreaded doing backgrounds and always started coloring the characters or subjects first. So I always ended up with a white background because I was afraid to mess the drawing up simply because I did not know how to translate the colors from the character or subject back into the background. The other way around truly is more easier, at least for me. Once I get the background on paper, the rest is a cakewalk. After I laid down all of the colors with the pencils, I go over them with a wet brush again, starting with the yellow edges to keep these yellow and vibrant, and then moving on to the neighboring colors. And again, the vibrancy of the colors are amazing once wetted. At some places, I only needed to put down one layer at all. Also, when you use them this way, they will last even longer as I had no need to sharpen them throughout this picture. When moving on to its poofy and adorable costume, I again start by laying down some yellow edges for reflective light and again mask off any of the glowing bits that are hovering about. The rest of its costume I use colors of the original Final Fantasy design. It's not 100% accurate though, also in design by the way, because I did put in a bit of my own flavor to the mix. Like for example, I made the ears a bit different. When you're making a drawing or painting from imagination without or with hardly any references, like my drawing here. I only used some character refs which were scarce to find for this version of Carbuncle anyway. Um, and you're having trouble picking colors of or you don't know what kind of background you want to paint, the thumbnail sketch method comes in handy once again. Just make small little paintings and experiment with the background ideas you have and the color combinations until you've found the one that is to your liking. Also, if you like to work with digital media, you could scan in your sketch or line art and take the same approach as with the thumbnail one. Doing it digitally is very forgiving as many mistakes can be easily corrected with not too much effort and wastes no materials, plus it keeps your real work clean and safe. I usually refer to Photoshop if I am not too sure on my color themes, as I can quickly slap on some colors on the scan and see if it works or not. But usually I can visualize what I want something to look like and select the colors I want to use and keep those apart. The visualizing part comes with experience, so everybody who paints or draws at a regular basis should be able to do this at some point. So no worries, you don't need to be a natural to be able to do that. 
We are at the end of the video. I hope it was helpful and enjoyable. If it was, leave me a like and hit the subscribe button if you don't want to miss out on any of my future videos. Feel free to leave a useful feedback in the comment section as I always seek to improve my videos for as far as I'm able to. Um, also, suggestions on their content are always welcome. And hopefully I will see you around in the next video. So thank you for watching and have a good one.